Okay, so welcome back to this session. So as I said uh, in the last class, I discussed about uh, the two applications, right? So today we'll discuss about other two applications. One is uh, multiple access radio communication. So in multiple access, we take it as a four division multiple access. And another application is uh, communication over channels with multipath. So how do we use uh, this uh, direct sequence uh, spread spectrum signals in these two applications? So, okay, by the time, uh, do you have any idea about what are the uh, different uh, types of multiple access uh, uh, techniques available? Different uh, types of multiple access techniques used in uh, different uh, uh, standards of mobile communication. Like in uh, 2G, uh, Okay, one is uh, time division multiple access and uh, next one uh, was uh, frequency, first one is FDMA, that is frequency division multiple access, so where uh, frequency is divided, right, and in time division multiple access, so each time is time access is divided, okay, so in uh, uh, four division multiple access, by using this uh, pseudo noise code, Okay, uh, each uh, by using uh, the pseudo noise code, uh, multiple users will be able to transmit the information simultaneously over the common uh, communication channel bandwidth. Okay, and here each transmitter receiver user pair uh, will have its own uh, uh, unique pseudo noise code. Okay. <coughs> So because of that pseudo noise code, they will be able to transmit uh, multiple users over the common uh, channel bandwidth. That we call it as uh, four division multiple access. Okay. So n number of users will be able to transmit their information over the same channel bandwidth. On the receiver side, again, they will be able to get back their information. How that is possible because of uh, having each user and transmitter pair can have a uh, unique pseudo noise code. Okay, so that is what is see many direct sequence per spectrum signals can occupy the same channel bandwidth, uh, provided that each signal has its own uh, uh, pseudo random sequence. Right. So with that. Just to illustrate that concept with the pictorial representation, I can see, I think it may not look so clearly, maybe blur also. So here I have shown uh, three signals. Uh, blue color is one information signal. Red color is another information signal. Uh, like green color is another information signal. So these are the three different users. Okay, each user uh, will be having its own uh, pseudo noise code. And, right, and then uh, transmitted over the common communication channel bandwidth, right? And then at the receiver side, they will be able to get back their information because of that uh, unique uh, pseudo noise code. Means each transmitter receiver pair should have the same pseudo noise code. Okay, the pseudo noise code what I use at the transmitter side, the same pseudo noise could be used at the receiver side to get back the uh, in original information signal. So whatever the receiver we use at the in this uh, uh, this one is known as rake receiver. Okay, so this is what the picture of uh, CDMA, four division multiple access. Uh, okay, so as I said at the receiver side, uh, the user who is having the knowledge of that particular pseudo noise will only be able to uh, get that information. Other for other signal will become a noisy signal for them. 
just to show in still better way means just see i have taken d1 of t d2 of t and so on dn of t there are n number of users right each uh, user is then modulated then the code is spread by using c1 of t c2 of t and so on of course cn of t okay so this is at the transmitter side so then it is transmitted over the channel so at the receiver side okay uh, means the receiver one will be able to get back the d1 of t only if we have a pseudo noise code of c1 of t okay then demodulated will get back the d1 of t so this is how the cdma works yes code division multiple access i said and it is uh, this uh, concept was developed by qualcomm company okay then uh, uh, it is known as is95 that is interim standard 95 uh, designated by the telecommunication uh, industry association TIA. okay so you might have heard about cdma1 cdma2000 of the uh, 2g and 3g standards for uh, digital cellular communication okay so this is just to have a broader picture of uh, this cellular communication with a different uh, coverage uh, cells Okay, macro cell, micro cell, and pico cell. Obviously, the macro cell coverage will be more than the micro cell. Then the micro cell coverage will be more than the pico cell. Then pico cell is the smallest uh, one uh, where uh, the coverage area is very limited. Okay, just to have a broad picture about this, how you know, the cellular communication uh, and how this uh, CDMA is used in that. Uh, then uh, the major advantage of the code division multiple access is that it is possible to accommodate large number of users okay and if each user transmits information over a short period of time okay? if each user transmits information over a short period of time it is possible to accommodate large number of users uh, with this type of multiple access technique it is uh, relatively easy to add new users or the decrease the number of users without uh, reconfiguring the system okay this flexibility is not available in any other multiple access techniques okay <coughs> sorry so now let us try to determine the number of simultaneous signals that can be accommodated in the cdma system okay to do that uh, we'll have some assumptions. Okay, we'll make some assumptions. The first one is uh, first assumption is that all signals have identical average powers. Okay? All the signals will have the identical average powers. And uh, here the received signal power level from each user is monitored by a central base station and a power control okay, is done over all simultaneous users via the control channel. That instructs the users on whether to increase or decrease their power level. Okay. Uh, so I repeat once again, the received signal power level from uh, each user will be monitored by the central station and power control is uh, done over all simultaneous users via control channel. That will instruct the users on whether to increase or decrease the power level. Okay. So I said uh, the first assumption is what all signals have identical average powers. Okay. So based on that, let uh, there are n suffix u, okay, simultaneous users. Uh, then the desired signal to noise interference power ratio okay at the given receiver can be written as ps by pn okay ps by pn that is the signal to noise interference power okay signal to noise interference power is equal to can be written as ps by nu minus 1 of ps as i said n suffix u is the number of simultaneous users so i need to determine this right 
So here PS, PS will get cancelled. I will be getting that as 1 divided by NU minus 1. So if I solve for NU, then uh, I will be able to determine this, uh, what is the uh, number of simultaneous users that can be accommodated over the CDMA channel. Okay. So this equation 1, we can use to determine the number of users that can be accommodated simultaneously. Uh, only thing is, here uh, assumptions are what? All signals are at the same uh, power level. And another thing is the pseudo noise sequences used by various users are uncorrelated. Means they are orthogonal to each other. Okay. And the interference from other users add on the power basis only. Okay. Not any other. This one. So this is the expression is uh, used for determining the number of simultaneous users accommodated by the CDMA system. So please have a note of this. Uh, as I said, the signal power, signal to noise interference power ratio, it is PS by PN. So please uh, have a note of this uh, problem. The desired level of uh, performance for a user in a CDMA system uh, with an error probability of 10 power minus 6, okay, which is achieved when uh, EV by N0 is equal to 20. Okay, EV by N0 is equal to 20. So in terms of dB, it is 13 dB. So determine the maximum number of simultaneous users that can be accommodated in a CDMA system if the bandwidth to bit ratio is 1000. Okay. If the bandwidth to bit ratio means W by R is 1000. And the coding gain is RC into D minimum S. That is, RC is a coding gain and D minimum S is the minimum having distance, which is equal to 4. So in terms of dB, it is 6 dB. So this is a problem. Means the given data is what? He has given uh, error probability and EV by N0 and he has given uh, bandwidth to bit ratio that is W by R and as well as the coding game. Okay. So we need to determine the value of NU that is uh, number of simultaneous users supported by the CDMA system. <coughs> So we can write the expression for EV by N0, EV by uh, I0. Okay. So I think I, okay. this is also I0 only, taken as N0. So EV by I0 means interference, okay, taken here as N0. So which is equal to W by R divided by NU minus 1 into RC into T minimum S. So this is a formula for EV by N0. Okay. So I think he has given W by R, EV by I0 and RC into D minimum H. And if we rewrite the expression for NU, that is number of uh, simultaneous users as W by R divided by EB by I0 into RC into D minimum H plus one, right? So all the values are given. If I substitute all these values, I will be getting the value of NU as 201, okay? So W by R, that is a bandwidth to bit ratio. And it said 1000, right? 1000 divided by 20 into 4. So 1000 divided by 20 into 4 plus 1 will get as 201. So I am uh, giving some problems, right? In this uh, chapter, so the same will appear for exam. Okay, most of the problems maybe for four marks, five marks like that. And here you may feel that sometimes so how we get these equations. So starting from this chapter, I started uh, writing the equations, right? So try to have a look back and see how it is related, okay? So for CDMA especially, you need to uh, understand uh, this equation. So directly from this, um, Signal power okay, is substituted as W by R. Also. Okay, so 
So EB by E naught is equal to W by R divided by NU minus 1 into this coding game. Okay, this is all about CDMA. Okay, just to recap what CDMA is. So, here n number of users will be able to transmit their information over the common uh, channel bandwidth. Okay, so at the receiver side, they will be able to get back their information. How each user, which uh, transmitter, receiver, user pair will have a unique pseudo noise code okay with that code they will be able to uh, transmit their information over the common channel bandwidth okay so each user is differentiated by a pseudo noise code person <coughs> so this is about uh, uh, cdma so next one is uh, next application is this that is uh, communication over uh, channels with multipath. Uh, so, just to understand what multipath is, right, is how do we, how these uh, direct sequence spread spectrum signals um, makes use of uh, this multipath as a, an efficient way for transmitting the information, right. Just to understand what multipath propagation is, I have taken here an example. So, this is the transmitter okay and uh, in car the mobile user is there right so from transmitter to receiver there will be different paths one is the line of sight path another two paths are there right one will be hitting this building and it will come back another one will be hitting this uh, signboard and will be reaching the receiver so this is what the multipath is okay in wireless channel from transmitter to receiver there will be multiple paths okay there will not be only one path if it is a wired line yes it has only one path since it's a wireless it can travel means the same signal can travel in different directions right because so many obstructions will be there in uh, between transmitter and receiver so we may get line of sight path and other than that there are other paths so we uh, means that signal undergoes uh, reflection, diffraction, scattering and all because of uh, these things. Okay, so in multipath, as I said, signal can take uh, many different paths between uh, transmitter and receiver due to reflection, scattering and diffraction. Uh, so when a signal is transmitted at the transmitter, is uh, joined now. Uh, as I see, there are uh, positive effects also and negative effects also of this multipath. So when I transmit the signal at the transmitter side, so because it uh, undergoes different paths, so at the receiver side, uh, what happens? The signal which is received through line of sight path will appear first, right? And then through other paths may uh, slightly appear at uh, uh, lag intervals. So there will be some delay. Right, because its path is different. So because of that, that leads to inter-symbol interference. That is one problem. I will come back to that. So first, let me tell the uh, positive effects of this multipath. So this uh, multipath communication, means it enables, even when the transmitter and receivers are not in line of sight, still they will be able to communicate each other. So that will uh, increases the radio coverage area. So this is one positive effect of multipath. Okay, uh, just to show the same thing with other uh, this one, doing transmitter and receiver. I said line of sight path. Here is the receiver, right? Uh, this is same this one with a little bit slightly different uh, diagram. Okay. So RF signal travels through multiple paths. RF channel is scattered by I said delay for file, and it is problematic when delay spread is comparable to symbol duration. I will come back to this. What is delay spread? <coughs> so 
So as I said, the negative effects of multipath, the positive effect is what? It will uh, increase the radio coverage area, right? So transmitter will, will be able to communicate even in the non-line of sight conditions. But the negative effects of multipath is, the first thing is a delay spread, or we call this time dispersion. So as I shown here, time dispersion, see, there are a different, uh, means the signal which is received to the receiver uh, will be delayed by some amount of time uh, through other paths. So that leads to intersymbol interference, I said, no? that's what I'm saying here. Okay, so delay spread is the what uh, uh, signal is dispersed over time. Okay, the signals coming from different paths of different length. Okay, that leads to uh, interference with the neighboring symbols. So that we call it as an intersymbol interference. So this is the major challenge in uh, multipath uh, uh, channel. Okay. So just to say multipath spread or delay spread, in, you can write it as the longest path minus shortest path divided by speed of light. So you say, let me say, uh, if the symbol duration is five millisecond, okay, for a five millisecond symbol duration, so one millisecond delay spread means how much it is? Twenty percent of uh, uh, intersymbol in overlap, right? Sir, no. So if there is a delay spread of uh, one millisecond, means 20% of that will be overlapping with the uh, previous symbol. So that leads to intersymbol interference. So that is actually a problem, right? Um, and even uh, the signal uh, which uh, travels with the different uh, paths leads to different phases also. So that is known as relay fading. Okay. So that will, uh, so why we call that as a relay fading is because of the distribution uh, curve. So it uh, creates fast fluctuations of the received signal. So that we call it a fast fading. So here, as far as the fading, fading means the fluctuation of the, the signal. Okay. So that way it fluctuates because of uh, the channel characteristics. Okay. So the challenge is to minimize that fading. Okay. So how it helps in, how it helps uh, in uh, mitigating uh, this problem with the use of diode sequence spread spectrum signal we'll see. So as far as uh, the channel is concerned, we classify as a frequency selective channel and another one is frequency non-selective channel. Okay. So in case of frequency selective channel, the signal bandwidth, let's say it is W, right, which is larger than the coherence bandwidth of the channel. See, coherence bandwidth means uh, it is a bandwidth means a range of frequency, right? So coherence bandwidth means it is a range of frequencies over which uh, uh, the channel response is uh, constant. Okay, that is known as coherence bandwidth, and uh, it is inversely proportional to the delay spread. That is one by uh, I can represent delay spread as TM. So one by TM is the coherence bandwidth. So if the signal bandwidth is uh, larger than the coherence bandwidth, then uh, there are two approaches for the signal design. Okay. So one is the usage of OFDM, that is uh, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. So here what we do in OFDM is, uh, we divide the entire bandwidth of the signal, right, uh, into, we subdivide the available bandwidth into n sub channels such that the bandwidth per channel will be, let us say, I said W is the uh, signal bandwidth. So that will be divided by n, where n is the number of sub channels. Okay. If that value is less than the coherence bandwidth, then we say uh, the signal bandwidth will be less than the coherence bandwidth. Then it becomes frequency non selective. The channel, each sub channel becomes frequency non selective. Uh, then uh, the signal in each sub channel will satisfy the condition that the symbol interval should be greater than this delay spread. The TM is denoted delay spread, right? If the symbol interval is greater than the, the delay spread, then there will be no ISI. Okay, if the symbol interval is less than the delay spread, then it leads to 
uh, intersymbol interference. So we see to it that the symbol interval should be greater than the delay spread. So this is one approach. Another approach is uh, to utilize the entire signal bandwidth W and transmit it on the single carrier. So that is what we do in the direct sequence spread spectrum system. Okay, that is a, so that is the second approach. So direct sequence spread spectrum is an effective way to generate the wideband signal for resolving this multipath signal components. Right? Uh, so by separating the multipath components, it will reduce the effects of fading. You can say. So as I said, the intersymbol interference can be avoided if we are willing to reduce the symbol rate. Okay, symbol rate that is one by t, such that the symbol interval will be much greater than the multipath spread or we say delay spread. Okay. Uh, so we use this direct sequence spread spectrum signal with a band W to resolve this multipath problem. So this is how we use this direct sequence spread spectrum signal uh, in the for communicating a information over a channel with multipath. Okay. So I gave here some little extra information about started means maybe for understanding, I have given this uh, multipath okay, diagram and all. So, what you are supposed to write in exam is how this direct sequence perspective signal uh, makes uh, the multipath as a positive effect to improve the communication system performance. Okay? But you need to understand this delay spread and all. I have given this example, okay? taken this diagram and uh, show now actually this delay spread matters and how does it creates intersymbol interference so to say what is intersymbol interference is the signal which is transmitted from uh, the transmitter side uh, will uh, reach the receiver at uh, a slightly different intervals right through different paths maybe the line of sight path means the signal which is received through line of sight path may receive at the receiver side at right time but the signal which is uh, coming from other paths may take some amount of time okay that amount of time i have given with example is one millisecond right if the symbol interval is five millisecond if the delay spread is one millisecond then 20 percent of the symbol interval will overlap so that leads to i said the intersymbol interference Okay. So to overcome that, there are two ways to uh, have a signal design. One I said about OFDM, another one is about usage of this, means uh, direct sequence per spectrum technique. So I think uh, with this, uh, uh, I think I can uh, say these applications of uh, direct sequence per spectrum signals is over. So if you have any Questions you can ask. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask. Don't have any questions. Yes, Pranav, everything is understood. I don't know the last one, how communication over multipath. So the thing is, uh, need to understand what is delay spread, right? How that multipath leads to the problem of intersymbol interference, how it can be avoided, right? I said there are two techniques. One is OFDM, other one is this direct sequence spectrum technique. Right in uh, direct sequence spectrum signal, what we 
we use the means we utilize the uh, entire signal bandwidth and transmit it on the single carrier right so that will make the channel is frequency selective and uh, it will avoid that inter-symbol interference so no issues then